Hi, my name is John Twig. I've come down from Campbell River to do a special show here on Carnegie TV with Faye Leung, the famous hat lady. Faye, thanks very much for coming in. It's a pleasure to be here with you, and thank you for coming to Vancouver. Yeah. Welcome. Well, thank you. Gung Hei Fa Choi, in the year of the monkey this year. Yeah. Well, we've known each other for a while, pretty long actually, and I know that you have an amazing history. Now, I think some people know a fair amount about your history, but I'd like to go back to the beginning. Uh, you were born in BC, were you not? I'm I'm, in, in Victoria. I'm the third generation born and raised in yeah. Victoria, and uh, I'm yeah. born in Victoria, raised in Vancouver. Yeah. My mother is second generation born and raised here and never set foot outside of Canada. Yeah. So we got to dig back from a yeah. long history of Canadian yeah. Chinese. Well, that's funny you should say that because I was going to explore, you know, we, we know there's a lot of Chinese Canadians in, in BC, but you know, you're a Canadian Chinese because you know, you, you were born and raised. Even though I am born and raised here and my mother's born and raised here, but we're still considered as Chinese and not yeah. recognized as Chinese Canadian. That's the yeah. saddest part during the lawful discrimination yes. and restriction at that time yeah. against all Chinese. Yeah. And that my mother and her siblings were not allowed to enter the Canadian uh, or the Western or the English school. So yeah. they're English illiterate yeah. because we're Chinese. We're not allowed to I enter. Know. Just well, like the blacks in, in the United States are not allowed to yeah. be to the education system. Well, were you so able to go to a public school? I, I'm well, not sure. Well, after that, my mother, uh, well, my mother is a family of 10 siblings. Uh -huh. So at Mabel time, she was able to go to the English school, but like a one-room school in Northwood, uh, just a one-room to learn just the basic. Yeah. Not not the whole education system. Oh, okay. So and then that was slowly graduate. So in my area, then we were able to go to the Canadian school like Strathcona, yeah. Strathcona School in, in uh, here in um, Pender Street and Jackson. But yeah. it's still not the same. We don't yeah. we we were. We didn't have phonics and whatnot, so we're still Chinglish. <laughs> not real English. You can say that, not me. <laughs> um, now, your father operated a school in Victoria, my, did my he not? My father and mother is very prominent community yeah. leader. My yeah. father, Leung Chap Kong, my mother, Kate, they were founder of the Chinese public school, the Gongji Ch Chinese public school, yeah. and also was educator. My father yeah. was a Chinese classical uh, scholar, a scholar yeah. and, and, and they had the Chinese uh, Guangxi Public School on the 320 East Pender at the corner of Gore Avenue in okay. Vancouver, Chinatown. What about the one in Victoria? Was that Victoria not is a is a Chinese Separate? public school, Wachu, Chinese public school in Victoria on Fiskart Street yeah. at 600 block across from the police station. Your you, photographic memory is amazing. <laughs> oh, I can still even see it. And as I talk to you, and I can vividly remember oh. in my photographic memory. Yeah. And that Chinese school was Came, became uh, uh, the school to educate the, the Canadian-born Chinese from yeah. that area because we they couldn't, yeah. like I said earlier, my mother yeah. and all that couldn't enter the school, so that's why yeah. that Chinese public school was to educate those uh, my yeah. mothers and their siblings and their friends, and um, the scholar was brought in uh, yeah. from China to teach them, well, and that's. There's a point that I've been sure. hauling at the government who doesn't know. They charged that those scholar a thousand dollar bond to Back come then. Co then at that time 1930s? to come. 1930s? 1920s. Oh, to man. to teach. Just imagine how much that is now. Yeah, to teach. In 1929, my father paid a thousand dollar, and right up until 1948, 49, my uncle Stephen, who was a teacher at the school, and my husband Dean Leong, Dean Chun Kong Leong, a thousand dollar. My father-in-law put up that one thousand wow. dollar, and that's a lot of money at that time. Yeah. And I have been telling the federal government and BC government, you talk about the head taxes, you talk about yeah. all that other taxes, what about this? Yeah. And what about that you had to have it yeah. before that they can land in Canada to, the job is only to teach yeah. as an educator yeah. okay. for the students. Now, you were born in Victoria, but you moved at a young age to Vancouver, is that yes. right? Yes, well, yeah. but still we connect with Victoria yeah. continually. Yeah. We never actually left Victoria okay. because the homestead were there, the aunts and the uncles and yeah. grandfather was there. Yeah. So it's all, with, at that yeah. time, you know, the Canadian Pacific yeah. steamship uh, well, sailing from harbor yeah. to harbor was easy to go oh, back. Okay. Now, your grandfather uh, was really a, a pioneer uh, you know, like the 1800s pioneer. 
I think. And he was making uniforms for the Canadian Pacific? Grandfather Nip Ing was 1981. 1880, 19, 18, 1881 yeah. started the Yikfong Company on 544 Fiskar Street. The building is still there. That's Victoria, by that's the way. That's in Victoria. That's where we were yeah. born, and that's where our first home was. Yeah. He was the first Chinese merchant, the first Chinese textile manufacturer. He yeah. manufactured all the uh, textile for all the department store at that time. was the Bay, the Hudson's Bay yeah. Department Store, Spencer's, who later became yeah. Eaton's and Sears. And also, like all the tea towels, the uh, the linens and pillowcases and all that, then follow with um, at the same time uh, uniforms for the Canadian yeah. Pacific steamship, Princess yeah. Louise, Princess Jones, and all that yeah. for the uh, uh, for the cooks and and that. Yeah. Then also work clothes for the uh, yeah. sawmills and the mines, the coal mine. Yeah. And Denman, I remember the Denman machine making buttons, but we were never, never, never to this very day allowed to wear Denmans because <laughs> they're not for anything but labor's <laughs> uniform. You mean so, denim? Denim. Yeah, yeah. OK, you uh, said denim. Wow, yeah. well, Chinglish, what do you expect? <laughs> Perfection. <laughs> Perfecto, like the Italians yeah. say. <laughs> now, I, I, there's lots of good reasons to explore your family history. Oh, so but, much. But, uh, you know, they pioneered in business, and then you, as a very young woman, uh, married to Dean, I think fairly young, but you pioneered in business, too. You, you trailblazed all sorts of things. All the way. All the way. Tell us, tell us about how you got into it, the Hudson's it, Bay Company, the oh, first Oriental hired by the Hudson's Bay Company. Oh, I have such, I've done so much. I was very young, and the Chinese uh, pioneers has been told me as the ambassador at large to fight for yeah. equality for the yeah. Chinese because we were yeah. all suffering so much yeah. of restrictions and discriminations yeah. and yeah. taboos and every year. But so, how did you get into that, the, the bay? The, you the, went the to see the manager? The, the generations before me all yeah. were unable to get employment. Yeah. And then even my generation, the third generation, educated here was absolutely still Chinese, Chinese yeah. national. They don't care how long you've been born and elsewhere in the world, you still consider uh, China as the motherland. Yeah. So when uh, Mary Lee, which is became the first lady of Alberta, who married... That's uh, your sister. No. no. Mary Lee is the uh, first lady of Alberta marrying the lieutenant mm -hmm. government, Normie, Normie Kong, oh, the okay. Eskimo. But that's not a relative of uh, yours. No, but no, Mary okay. Lee graduated together. Well, oh, okay. Yeah, because and, and, uh, you, t you two went to the Bay together, did you no. not? No. Where was uh, it? We, we graduated together at the Vancouver College, oh, okay. and we were very young. Secretarial. And Mr. Moore was saying that, no, okay, you gals, no jobs for you because you're Canadian, yeah. uh, Chinese. You're Chinese, so there's no jobs. And the constitutions in Canada, yeah, um, all those uh, multiple national is constitution, no Oriental or East Indian. Yeah. Uh, they hire no Oriental, no yeah. East Indian on their job. So Mr. Moore says, you're on your own. And so, uh, of course, Mary, she's such a wealthy family. She doesn't have to work. And I don't think she worked a day. <laughs> but anyhow, I have to work. <laughs> yeah. I have to uh, uh, yeah. help my family and make a living and all that in those yeah. days. It was tough. Yeah. And I just decided that I'm going to go and see Mr. Ernie H. Brown, the general manager of the Hudson's Bay Department Store. I read right up to his office. And he sat there in this big, huge, beautiful walnut desk and distinguished as ever. And I says, I'm fairly young, and I'm, I'm qualified in secretarial and office work. But also and, translations. Oh, I can do that, too. I can translate. I can interpret. I speak yeah. seven dialects of Chinese, and yeah. I can read and write Chinese. Yeah. But you're not going to hire me in any of the job because I'm Chinese. And he was amazed. He called the personnel manager in. And the personnel manager in his slim gray suit looked at me and says, and Mr. Brown in his three-piece brown suit says, well, what's all this about? And he says, well, sorry. The, the, the multiple national company doesn't hire Chinese, no Orientals of any sort, yeah. and he's Indian. So Mr. Brown and I, I said to him, you know, Beside re reading and writing and doing bookkeeping and typing and secretarial work yeah. uh, at administration, I'm very experienced in merchandising. I'm just going to interject there because you had a lot of business experience yes. in your family's business. Yeah, well, I says I have very good experience in yeah. director of sale. I was in director of yeah. sale. 
in the, uh, Chinese merchandising and groceries and all that. Yeah. And I'm very good at purchasing of merchandising. And I yeah. can help. And then on your pay day, I can do all your translations and yeah. all your interpretation. So he looked at me very seriously. Well, you're a pretty good image. Then how about you do three jobs for the price of one? <sighs> And I was to read all the cash register on the main floor at 7 o'clock in the morning. Then I would go upstairs and do my bookkeeping uh, on the bookkeeping machine all the, under the B's. So all the B's, a stack of yeah. uh, uh, invoices and uh, credit cards and all that would be my job to enter all the B's, including Mr. Brown, because <laughs> he's Ernie H. Brown. <laughs> and then I do... Translation and interpretations. Yeah. So you got, you got hired. That was 1953? And that was $100 a month for three jobs for the price of one. Wow. But that was good yeah. because we got into the door, yeah. and I slowly was able to open the door to the bay and for the multiple national company yeah. to hire Chinese. Yeah. And I was very pleased that we, I was yeah. able to But you didn't stay there very long. Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> well, well, you married Dean about the same time. Shortly after? No, I was no. married. I was married oh, already. Mean? Oh, okay. Oh uh, no, but I don't remember before or after. But whatever it is, yeah. but we had to work. We have to find. We had, what is it at those days? What you call ba sao heng ga? Do you know what I'm talking about? No. <laughs> <laughs> you were you were you don't have money in your hands to oh. start your life. You are freely using your two hands to start your life. Okay. And to for your future and together. Yeah. So that means whether you're married or single, ba sao heng ga. You're yeah. Empty-handedly, without funds, but you're going to work for what yeah. your life yeah. shall be. So I subsequently, in a year later, in 1954, my sister Gwen, who is a doctor of biochem, graduated at UBC with a Go Award medal because she's an absolutely great student. Not me. I hate school. Well, you're smart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a monkey of the year of the monkey, I think. I'm not on the year of the monkey, but I'm like a monkey. <laughs> supposed to be clever and all that kind of thing. We've but never, we won't talk about yeah, that. Yeah, we've only got 20 minutes. Okay, so whatever it is, so we, Gwen, we're same thing. She's a pharmacist, no jobs, and we went to Whitworth's department store. At that time was the largest pharmaceutical and western department yeah. store in Vancouver. You remember the Woodward's department Absolutely. store on Abbott and Hastings. So yeah. we went directly to the pharma pharmaceutical department, Mr. Davies. You're not going to hire Gwen? Because she's Chinese, huh? So <laughs> Mr. David was kind enough. He went to the board of director to try to change that constitutions of no Oriental and East Indian. So that's how Gwen yeah. uh, conquered Woodward's yeah. department store and yeah. opened the doors for the Chinese okay. Canadians. Got We're to, very proud. We got to move forward. Uh, you got a real estate license at a very young age? Oh, I was the youngest in the license of real estate broker in Canada. And then you and Dean opened the first trust company in Chinatown? Oh, that's a, we, we, we opened our Panda Realty and Insurance Agency in uh, real estate insurance of all types, financing, proper management, mortgages, financing, uh, construction, development, um, yeah. and uh, trades, international trade, etc. Yeah. Yeah. But in 1920, 1962, I have convinced, um, I just felt there was business in the trust company that is missing. Yeah. Because there was no money depositing or, or, or people knowledge of deposit account of daily interest in trust company at that time. And, uh, and I was doing a lot of correspondence of uh, banking between the, uh, Hong Kong and Far East and, and Canada. Yeah. So instead of correspondence, so I said to the, to the Western general manager, J.D. Wilson, I says, you know, you're missing the boat. And you're the trust company. There's no trust company in Canada that has a branch office in anywhere in Canada that can take deposit. Yeah. And I think that uh, I should be the founder of that first trust company oh. branch office in Canada. In my office, we will organize it. We will educate yeah. the people of daily interest and take deposit yeah. instead of yeah. quarry interest. That and the, what was the address of that? That was in my Pender Realty, right in the heart of yeah. Chinatown, 156 East Pender. Yeah. And it, I rocked the, the financial district. They went berserk. Yeah. How come Dean and I was the first one that <laughs> found and opened the first trust and, company branch? And until you, you got so yeah. much deposit, thousands of deposits, yeah. 
then they opened, that's where the Chinese yeah. now, the branch is now. You, you also pioneered some international trade, but I don't think we have time to get there. Oh, that's another story, yeah, another but time. The, you won the Man of the Month award. Oh, yes. Tell I'm, me that. Oh, I mean, I'm not a, much of a man the, of the, the month. It was the Vancouver, not the Board of Trade. It was no, visitors it was and the convention? Vancouver Visitor and Greater Vancouver Convention yeah. Bureau way back in 1970s, and yeah. I was uh, 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 honored as the Man of the Year because uh, I... Man of the Year or Man of the Month? Oh, I okay. was. I bought in so many tours from oh, okay. Brazil, everywhere. I, oh. I pro promoted tourism abroad, and I got yeah. the award from the BC government for promotion uh, tourism abroad. Yeah. I done a lot of tourism since 1949, and then in the 70, I was awarded that. So I said to Mr. Harold Merrily, he was then the yeah. general manager. I says, I'm not much of a man because <laughs> subsequently, 15 years after, I got my second son so <laughs> was born <laughs> during that period. Yeah, that was on centennial yeah. year, uh, okay. the year of Canada centennial, yeah. 1974. Yeah. Okay, we're just, well, we got a few minutes left, but the, as we're recording this, it's the day after the funeral for Dal Richards. Yes, and current affair. You used to dance at the top of the... Mandarin. Uh, ma well, I the, mean, the, the top of the Hotel yeah, Vancouver. Yeah, we didn't even mention your restaurant, the Mandarin, oh, don't talk which about pioneered that. the dim sum. Here it is. But, but the, the dancing skills, you and Dean, your husband, were really good dancers to the point that everybody else on the floor would walk away to watch you do yep, the tango that's right. to Dell and yep. then yes. and you and Dell became quite close I yes, gather. Yes, that's right. We danced yeah. there when, before we were married. We were young teenagers. We, oh. we were dancers and with 43 years we danced together. Tango, quick oh. walls, the rumba, the samba, yeah. uh, the bossa so, nova, the cha cha cha, the congo, wow. you name it, we danced it. How did you do practice or where did you practice? We don't practice, we just, just dance. But Dean's has his own calligraphy. You follow him and you dance. And you okay. dance and you dance and you dance. Well. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and this is why I wrote a very lovely uh, uh, details of Dell from the beginning of the time when we danced. To, to, yeah. this, uh, to, the, to the to the this yeah. to, to to the very last was this is Dale who wrote me this in his own handwriting yeah. last year September 29 yeah. 14 because yeah. uh, I asked him uh, at lunch down here in Broad Street I says a lot of people want to know what is the name of your theme song the last dance yeah. so he says to Faye Dale Richards theme song the hour of parking you know? and Dale Richards signed it September 29th and his email his telephone and he said you are marvelous, Faye. You are the same. You danced yeah. to my orchestra back in 49 and 50s. No, very, go. very touching thing. I think we've got a time to squeeze it in. Uh, your husband, Dean, died on that oh, dance floor. Yes, yes, it was very sad. Yeah. And uh, Dell said, I wish I could go that way. Oh, yes, because uh, 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 Dean, Dean and I was dancing the quick, the uh, quick was on the Blue Daniel, and Blue Dan Daniel was one of our favorite songs. Yeah. And he does it. He doesn't do much work. I'm the one that does most of the footwork, and he's very yeah. good at leading that. And all of a sudden, he let me off the dance floor. He escorted me to the dance floor and sat on the table. And I said, you're not feeling well. And this couple follow us. And sh they said that I want to tell you how much we admire your dancing, and I want to know how long you dance together. Yeah. And uh, you are just like newlyweds dancing cheek to cheek, and I was just so thrilled to see you dance. Yeah. So Dean was just raising his right hand to the to the his eyebrow to answer him. We danced 43 years, and we've been married for, for 40 years, over 40 years. And he closed his eyes and went. Wow. And that was the time of the Blue Daniel still playing. It was heart failure. Yeah. And doctor said even with a second, he wouldn't have. So Dell Richard said to me a few days after, when we were talking, when he phoned and gave me his condol condolence, he said, you know, I want to go that way, but only with my sax or trump in yeah. my hand. Because well, he, he did was in just, a way. Well, he, he he didn't make it to New Year's. But, no, but he, but he was, he was at playing home. up to age ninety nine. So no, he's ninety eight. Pardon me. Ninety seven is when he, on, yeah. on December the thirty yeah. first at eleven forty one yeah. he died yeah. at the in his home. But yeah. um, he was sick for a few few weeks uh, yeah. prior to that. I was yeah. told. Yeah. But um, and they were just so good to me at the yeah. Hotel Vancouver. Yeah. And Nancy Wong was a director in Louis, and they were so good. Yeah. And later I met up with this couple at, at the Tong Louis, the chairman of the London Drug F Memorial. Yeah. And they came over, and yeah. I thanked them. It was us 
that was yeah. with you yeah. at that time to ask that question. So it was really quite sad, well, and Faith, I miss him very much. I know. And i got to thank you for doing this. It's and my pleasure. We're done. But, uh, you know, folks, uh, Faye's working on a set of books, some history storytelling books, and I sure hope uh, we find some sponsors to get those oh, books Oh, we need done. sponsors to get an editor. Yeah. Yeah, you'll be a good editor well, and have it published. <laughs> perhaps. Because it's tremendous stories, yeah. part and parcel we, of the we, Canadian we historic. Just, we just scraped the top here. Of Not some, even the top. Yeah. We haven't even scraped anything. It's not yeah. even a drop. Yeah. But so it is important Canadian historical yeah. heritage to yeah. serve for posterity, yeah. for future generation to know of life as it happened, the yeah. life and time, the heart and soul that woven the gold fabric but inlaid with black thread, yeah. that the fabric of society, to okay. give back to society. So thank you ever thank so you. much. Oh, you are. And happy Chinese New yeah, Year, the monkey. To you too. And thank you for watching. Hi, my name's John Twig here on Access TV, and I've got a special show today with a very special guest, Faye Leung, a lady who needs no introduction. We're talking about Lunar New Year, also called Chinese New Year. Faye, thanks for coming. It's a pleasure to be here. Welcome. So, I understand it's the year of the monkey, but yes. some people say it's the red monkey. What's the difference? A monkey is a monkey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, technically, that is the reason they, they would say yeah. uh, the monkey in, in five represent the five elements, you know, okay. metal, water, earth, and all that. But that's just technicality. But the Chinese generally in in the 4,713 years of our monkeys, the year of the monkeys, or whatever the year yeah, is. Yeah. So the monkey is very special. Yeah. The monkey is full of fun. Now, you were born in Victoria, I yes. think, yes, when you were a kid. Yes. Did, did you do uh, Lunar New Year? Oh, every year. Yeah. But in those days, mostly the Chinese family privately celebrate the Chinese New Year. Yeah. It got expanded very hugely with the immigrants' arrival from the, the Orient, yeah. such as Hong Kong and so forth, yeah. and more so with yeah. China. But yeah. in the old days, then the families celebrate its years of uh, yeah. each year, yeah. whether it's the monkey or the dragon. Well, I grew up in West Vancouver, so I know that... Uh, there's a because of there's so much Chinese culture in Vancouver. I know a little bit, but I don't know a lot. What's special about the monkey year as opposed to say the ox? Well, the monkey is special. Why? The monkey is so active. Is it the smart? Of the monkey is very smart, very so, yeah. clever, naughty, yeah. full of wisdom, excellent memory, knowledgeable and experience, uh -huh. and capable and yeah. excellent in creating opportunity, uh -huh. diplomatic. All those wonderful things the monkey is, the monkey are. Yeah. So maybe I'm a monkey too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you're a diplomat. You know, you're in the in the. Are you still in the uh, the corps? The, on the honorary, yeah, honorary honorary consul? honorary consul general yeah, for yeah, yeah. Guyana, and then also yeah. ambassador for China. Yeah. But the so, monkey is very important. So monkey. what are you going to do personally? For, for Chinese New Year? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's lots of activities nowadays. Yeah. In the old days, it wasn't. It's like New Year's Eve is a family gathering, yeah. like New Year, like Christmas Eve, you know? Yeah. All family get together, and everybody gets special clothing, new yeah. clothing. And, yeah. and then the young one, when they're, before they're married, they get lucky money, like we call it Lee C in the old yeah. days. But now they call it in a new terminology as a red envelope, meaning yeah. lucky money in it. Yeah. Is, so, there, is there special food? Oh yes, definitely. For the monkey or just every no, for new year? No, for the blessing of the new year. Yeah, every just new a, year. the blessing of the new year. Yeah. Special food with meanings, yeah. such as lettuce is, is, is uh, prosperity forthcoming, uh -huh. oyster for good things, and um, siu choy, which you call it, um, uh, which is uh, long life. Okay. And all uh, and fat toy is for posterity and yeah. and gum toy that's for money. Yeah. So all those ingredients has its own meaning that you put yeah. it into a dish or soup for the New Year's okay. uh, Eve and then gathering the family big feast. Yeah. Uh, but the feast is New Year's Eve and then yeah. the Chinese New Year on the Chinese yeah. New Year Day. But that day is actually meatless. It's more a vegetarian. Oh, interesting. And then, then it goes on to the second day and the third day, then that's the different of yeah. the different food. Of course, chicken yeah. with the heads and tail, meaning good beginning and good ending, yeah. with okay. all, all those omens in it as well. Yeah. So Chinese New Year was a very important event among the Chinese. You know, but now it, they celebrate hugely. 
Yeah. Now, the uh, Western culture has a, a, a horoscope and with astrology in it, and you know some people can predict things. Is it the same with the Chinese horoscope? Yes. The, like there's twelve animals, eh? Yeah. And each animal, each animal, that's what they were predicting of what the year should be or what the year yeah. will be. Yeah. But in the uh, nowadays, the um, uh, the Western uh, uh, Caucasians are right jumping into celebrating the Chinese New Year, as you probably see. Well, it's even commercialized. It, well, I was just going to say it's a great business event. <laughs> yeah, even commercialized, <laughs> you know. And, and television. It, yeah, and so then and it's, it's a parade. And yeah. so the politician, what do they do? The red envelope, the lazy, is supposed to be money to give out for good luck yeah. for the children that's not married. The married person oh, gives okay. it to the unmarried. Yeah. But no, so what do they do? So they buy a whole stack of envelope, print their names onto it, like uh, so, uh, Christy Clark, uh, Premier of British Columbia and stuffed candies in it. Okay. And then they come along the march on the parade and start hanging out to okay. the crowd. So okay. it's it, they, they, they just commercialize. And will, will there be a big parade in Vancouver? Oh, yeah. Year? Lately okay. years they have, and this huge parade yeah. in Chinatown. Okay. And I was on it last year on top of a convertible and okay. waving to all the friends while all those politicians around. Well, well, let's around hope with. the weather is good this year. I got, we're just about out of time, but uh, Gang Hei Fat Choi. Uh, what does that mean? Gang Hei Fa Choi, wishing you posterity. posterity. And that is what, one of the phrase of Happy New Year. Actually, it means, actually it's Happy New Year. But in the new terminology, this is Gang Hei Fa Choi yeah. uh, and uh, Gang Hei Fa Chai in Mandarin. I was just going to ask. And that is uh, blessing you of posterity. Well, that's a great so, place to end. Faye, thank you very much for coming on Access TV and telling us about Lunar New Year. <laughs>